Up here we have notes and along here we have the layout of the houses. I'm Josh and I run a building company here in New Zealand. In today's video, we will cover different types of building plans. From concepts through to working drawings and engineering plans. We'll break these down and stick around to the end of the video where I'll let you know some tips and tricks for understanding plans, especially at the start of a job. So I'm on site for a five townhouse development and I've got the plans here. First, the different types of plans we work with. To start with, we normally look at a concept plan or a scheme plan, and that's like one or two pages of an overview. Here we've got the scheme plan showing the five lots and in relation to the boundaries and the services. This here talks about what each lot is gonna end up with, how we're chopping up the 508 square meters into give or take 100 square meter lots. 60 square meter buildings, site coverage. Basically, they are just high level concepts. Once signed off, a good scheme plan will become the basis for all your other documentation that you put together. The next phase of a concept is we'll usually develop a floor plan. The floor plan will be like, how is the building actually gonna look and feel? This is where it starts to get a little bit more detailed. Up here we have notes, and along here we have the layout of the houses. Whereabouts are the doors and windows gonna go? How large are the rooms gonna be? Details such as where is a hot water cylinder gonna go? All of these things start to get put onto the floor plan. This is what the final product's gonna look and feel like, and it's in 2D and it's on a small piece of paper. So you already know it's five townhouses in a row. Lot one, front door is accessed off the footpath and you come into the kitchen area. Living over here, small hallway here with a wash cupboard at the back and bedroom on the left and a bedroom on the right. Moving down, lots two, three and four mimic the same floor plan. Now down the back, unit, slightly different layout as we were able to make use of the setbacks in a different way. You come through the front door and then we've got the bedrooms first up on the left and right, bathroom in the middle and then a kitchen, living, dining here and each unit had its own sliding door out to a north facing patio. Usually a concept plan is four or five pages and it includes some elevations of the outside of the building and these concept plans will be enough for us to give a high level estimate on the project. The owner can then use this to go to the bank and ensure that the project's feasible from their point of view. And again, this document becomes the basis for all of the detailed drawings that follow on. Working or architectural drawings include details such as foundations, roof, layout, bracing plans, and then a whole raft of cladding details. They take the concept and give it more depth, but we'll analyze some of these details more later in the video. Then we develop a structural drawing. The structural documents will then go to people like the engineer, pre-nail factory, anyone who needs to have their input on that. We can also use the structural plans for pricing and we'll develop the specification at the same time. Now there's two parts to this. The architect or designer will list a bunch of materials. The next part of the specification is adding in the exact color that the client wants these to be. It can include things right through to like the appliances, Here's an example of a cover sheet we use in-house. These things start to dictate the final look and the feel of the house. It's really important that you have the majority of these details locked in before you start your project. Those two documents then become kind of like the framework for how is it actually gonna get built. Talking about building things up, our goal is to hit 100k subs. Go ahead, click subscribe, help us out. A couple of other things we might need. We might need a topographical survey. And it shows you everything. So existing dwelling, existing garage. So this site is about 66 meters above sea level, relatively flat across the whole thing. From this point here to this point here 
is only 300 mils. In saying that, the build platform is slightly higher than the road and when you're pushing right up to the front edge of the boundary, that's something to think about. We did have to put a small retaining wall in. You can see where the existing fence is. That fence is gonna need to get removed and put exactly on the boundary. If you're doing a subdivision, you'll also need a plan for services. You can see that we're bringing the stormwater and the sewer up the north side of the property. One trick to not get caught out on is that the scheme plan is the proposal and then the approved plan, usually called engineering approval, not to be confused with building engineering, is then presented. Make sure you're following the approved engineered plan for your services. We'll show you a job here where the approved plan changed slightly from the scheme plan. You can see here that the services moved from one side of the property to the other. Every design company lays out their plans slightly different and every council that approves plans wants the plans presented slightly different. I personally think that it's an area that could get streamlined where we could just agree on one method that ticks the box for designers, builders and councils but we don't, we have a bunch of different councils, we have a bunch of different designers, and the builder just has to work their way through them. This is also why we prefer to work with designers that we're familiar with. It means that we're less likely to find little ticking time bombs in the plans. So you're on site and you're about to put down a foundation. One of the first things you do is you get your consented plans really important it's the tick of approval here from the council to say right these are good to go then we will flick through to here and we will look at a site plan this is the overall layout of the site and then the next important thing is the foundation plan so in here we have a concrete slab and it also shows us how the concrete slab sits on site. All these ins and outs are the front doors to the units, all these are like out to their patio areas. You can see here where each firewall or party wall is going to go to chop up the slabs. We want to find our four boundaries and we've got some measurements. The slab is 39 metres long and it's 9 metres wide. So we can start to now make what's on a piece of paper a reality on site and we do that with things like profiles and string lines. First day on site you would be looking at your foundation plan, you would be setting up profiles and you would be stringing out your foundation. We can take the measurements off the plan. Here is our site datum right now. And then we can also double check that in relation to some fixed points outside such as the road or a sump lid. Basically there's a number of things on the property we can use to double check that it's all working in relation to each other. You're just trying to create a grid system with your profiles. What I do is I pick a starting point. Don't try and solve the hardest corner, solve the easiest corner. Work out what you do know. Where are the existing pegs and where's the first easy corner? Get that locked in and everything else will start to click in place. <laughs> Subscriber just drove past. If you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe. So we've got our concrete foundation down. Most of our foundations are rib raft slabs and they follow the engineer's plans. Here you can see the engineering design. These circles here are the pile layouts and you have the rib raft layout as well. You have what is a load bearing rib that spreads the load. You also have our saw cuts marked here in red. Essentially this here is represented along here. So what you want to start doing is getting in your mind's eye, how is this going to look and feel? You want to picture yourself standing in each of these rooms that's way easier said than done and the first time you do that it's going to be hard but the more you look at a plan and then you look at what's on site the more you will start to understand them and the less scary they become we've got a roof plan you can see it shows you the valleys and the ridges and also marks where all of the downpipes need to go and how much each section of roof is catching. 
So there is a section in the plans called details. Here is a bunch of details and a lot of these are standard details. We've got an external corner here and we've got an internal corner here. And so two things, they're showing us the layer of events and each item has got an arrow. So you can see that the wall underlay is a dash and the cavity pattern looks like that. And you've got your cladding and you've got your framing. It's also got some measurements on it. And now on the external corner, it's all flipped around, but it shows you the order of events. We put our framing on, then we put our underlay, and then we put our battens. Like you look at that and you say, in what order would I put that on? If you're in the Hutt Valley and you're thinking about building new, whether it's a subdivision, a dream home, or something in between, get in touch and we will guide you through the process from concept all the way through to code of compliance. Now let's jump into some tips to help you understand the plan. Go to an existing build, even your own house. Go and get the floor plan for your own house right now. Go and print it off at the council and walk around your house and get a feel for what's it on paper versus what are you seeing and touching right now in real life. The more you can create a relationship between what you see on the paper and what's happening in real life, the more that these plans will make sense to you. So if you're an apprentice or a new builder, you should be taking these plans home and you should be reading them. You should be looking at them. You should be working out the parts of it you do understand and the parts of it you don't understand. If this is a skill you want to get better at, you've then got to come to work and you've got to talk. Now obviously you don't want to do that like, oh, we're standing a frame. Hey, oh, can I just stop and talk to you about the plan? You gotta pick and choose your times. Start of the day, end of the day, smoko. Great times to like ask that qualified person on site their questions. If you can follow Lego instructions, you can follow building instructions. It's just a little bit more detailed. Like often as an apprentice, you don't get shown the detail. You just say, right, we're gonna wrap the building. Now do this. Right, we're gonna cav bat the whole thing. Now do this. But you are following that detail step by step. Pause look at the plan, have a look at like the parts that you do know and understand, and then again, relate that to what's happening on site. The more that you can build up a picture in your mind of like, this is what the detail says, and this is what the physical product on site looks like, the more you will start to understand them and the less scary they become. It can be daunting, it does look like a lot of information. It is a lot of information. It's all the things we need to build a house but it's not as scary and as daunting as you think. Start with what you do know, find a way to relate it to the physical process that's happening on site, and it will become something that you can master.